we see we can do them this morning, whether here in person or visiting us online. I pray you all had a great Thanksgiving, and I have a few announcements to bring to your attention this morning. This is a reminder to the missionary ministry that started on the first Sunday in December. The missionaries will be donating non-perishable food items for their Christmas baskets community service project. Please see this. Please see Deaconess Brenda Parker, Deaconess Linda Shelton, or Sister Elsie Derricott for the list of items that are needed. Also, any person of the Jerusalem Baptist Church community can also participate in this Christmas giving project. The 2023 Jerusalem Church calendar will be available for all members in January 2023. All ministries are asked to submit your meeting dates, programs, and other important events by today. November the 27th to Deacon is Maxine Carey. The JYIA will sponsor a community Christmas fellowship and community service project on Sunday, December the 11th, 2022 at 1 o'clock p.m. This event will be held at the Depot 107 South Railroad Avenue in Ashland. Come enjoy musical gifts from our JBC youth as well as games and fellowship. The JYIA will be collecting black bass, blankets, gloves, and socks to donate to a local charity at this event. Please come and donate an item in fellowship with our talented youth. This concludes our announcements that were received this morning. We will have selections from our choir, followed by a message from our guest minister, Reverend Buford. Reverend Buford is no stranger to us here at JBC and has visited us on multiple occasions. We would like to welcome Reverend Buford and his family back to JBC. Thank you and be safe, Jerusalem. the street 
your head with colors, Lord God, and being gunned down, but we're not. And I thank you, Father God. We need to just give you all honor, praise, and glory. But our hearts go out to those families, Lord God, who have lost loved ones, Lord God, who are suffering, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that they will find strength in you. And Father God, we just lift you up, give your name, praise, honor, and glory today. And we just thank you, Father God. I just thank you, Lord God, for my family. This is a time of thanksgiving, Lord God. And I will take it lightly. And I thank you right now in the mighty, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Forgive me if I left someone out, Lord God, or something. But you know my heart, Lord God. And I just thank you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give the Lord some praise in this place. Hallelujah. I know it's raining outside, but it's not raining inside. Not the wet rain anyway, but the spirit rains. Amen. God's spirit reigns in this house. Hallelujah. They said everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Amen. I think David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the time he's good. I'm just excited to be in this house once again. Amen. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, Jerusalem. Amen. I, I, I'm humbled. Amen. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. Amen. To stand before you again and declare the word of God. Can you join me, if you don't mind, in a, in a moment of prayer? Will that be all right? Yeah. Amen. Let us go before the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you right now. Lord, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh God, you are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand, your name is worthy to be praised. Now, Father, we come before you right now to repent for every sin we've committed by our thoughts, by our words, by our actions. We ask for mercy right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless this house of worshipers. Bless this, this place, oh, God, that's been dedicated to you to lift up your holy name. Bless the members, bless this staff of leaders, God, who are yet worshiping you. God, we invite your presence in this place. We invite your glory in this house. Heal those who are sick. Deliver those who are oppressed. And then, God, let us stay on one accord today. I heard somebody say that where there is unity, there is strength. Amen. We know, God, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So, Father, we thank you right now. We are your humble servants. And, God, we give you honor. We give you praise and we give you glory. In your darling son, Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, I, I'm sure you came to hear a word this morning. Amen. And so God gave me one before I got here. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you have your words, your Bibles, I want you to come with me to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37, beginning at verse number 1. Ezekiel, part of the Old Testament canon. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1. We know it's a familiar text, a familiar story. When you have it, say amen. And there we will find the word of the Lord today. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1. Do you have it? All right. It reads, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling 
pain and the bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy to the man, say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said, these are the bones of the whole house of Israel. Amen. You may be seated. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing, and most importantly, the doing of his holy scripture. Amen. And so, with the text having been shared and read this morning in Jerusalem, I want to talk to you this morning, I want to talk to you this morning about speak life when you're in the valley. I want to talk about speaking life when you're in the valley. In the valley, amen. And so, uh, this text in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14, is talking about the bones. And the bones in this text are a symbolic representation. They represent the hopes and the dreams, the desires, the destiny, the purposes, and our missed opportunities. And in this context, the bones are a metaphor for our lives. Things that we have missed out on. Times we came in a day late and a dollar short. Amen. Things we heard about after the fact. Things we could have done if we had been able to do them. So those are the dry bones in the valley of our lives. As we read the text and familiarize ourselves with the context and, and the content rather of these scriptures, we find that as God spoke with Ezekiel, about the dry bones in the valley, the Lord himself told Ezekiel that these dry bones, they represented the whole house of Israel. The bones represented Israel. And the Lord used a metaphorical analogy to ask Ezekiel a rhetorical question. He said, son of man, can the bones live? As the story relates to us in this present time, everything that we've missed out on, every time we wanted to do something but couldn't do it, every time we had a dream that went unfulfilled, those things went down to the back. The time we got looked over, left behind, and laughed at, it went down to the back. All of the things we desired. All of the, of the purposes and goals I had in my life, but I couldn't achieve them at this moment, they went down to the back. And the question is, can the bones in your life live? Hallelujah. And when you're in the valley, speak life. Speak life. When you're in the valley. Son of man, daughter of man, believer, Christian, church member, can your bones live? The prophet said, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit and it set me in the valley. The valley represents many things. The valley, it, it represents my trying season, but I couldn't accomplish it. It, it represents my days of challenge when I had no help. It, it represents my lonely days when I had no friends. It represents my trials and tribulations when I had no means. It represents my days of uncertainty when I didn't know up from down. It represents my time of preparation when I didn't have the access. The valley represents my sorrows, my loss, the pain in my heart. The valley represents everything I wanted to do but I could not achieve. Come on now. It also represents my time being in the pit before God put me in the past. Sometimes you gotta go through the valley. Amen. Before you can get to your purpose, you got to go through the valley. Everything is not gonna always be easy. Amen. Everything is not gonna happen when you want it to happen. We have a, a, a lot of dreams that are left behind on the road that's traveled. Amen. But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, we can be just like the prophet Ezekiel and go speak to the bones. Lord, can the bones live? Can they live? 
misunderstood and despised. Have I got a witness here? The vanity where I'm overlooked. The vanity where I'm talked about and abandoned. The vanity where I'm laughed at and slandered. The vanity where I'm put down instead of being picked up. Has anybody been to the valley before? I, I don't know about you, but I've been in the valley, amen. The valley a place where you get sabotaged and set up. Picked up to be picked on, betrayed and delivered. But the valley is not the end. Because of God before me, who can be against me? And although the valley is full of crap bones, I have my Ezekiel experience where God said, Son of man, can no bones live? Oh, I feel like preaching right now. Come on. He said, God, you know. Amen. And so, and so if I can tell you about the valley, can I give you a description of the valley? The valley is, according to the definition, it's an elongated area, a very low area, amen. It's often running between a hill or a mountain. The valley is made deeper by a stream of water, amen, or a river as it flows from the highland to the lowland and to a lake or a sea. So the Lord set Ezekiel in the valley. The valley was a low place. If you know anything about a low place, you got to look up when you're in the low place. Amen. And, and I'm going to look to the hills from which come my help. When I'm in the valley, I got to look up. I can't look down when I'm in the valley. I got to look up. I look up and say, the Lord, because my help comes from him. So the Lord said, Ezekiel in the valley, just to have a conversation with him. Ask him a question that he already knew the answer to. Whatever that is a rhetorical question, it's a question that the answer is already known. And he said, Son of man, can the bones live? Well, God, it seems like to me, if you are the one who reached into nothing and stepped on to nowhere and said, Let there be, seems like you know that the bones can live. Lord, if you are the one who was in the middle of nothing and said, let there be, and everything came to be because you spoke it seems like you know the bones can live. Lord, it seems like if you are the one that said, let us make man in our image and give him dominion, it seems like, God, if you would speak life into the dust and make it a breathing soul, you know that the bones can live. Son of man, can the bones live? Well, most preachers, when we get to this part about the text, it affords an opportunity to really engage in the theological celebration. We start talking about, well, the hip bone connected to the leg bone. Leg bone connected to the knee bone. Knee bone connected to the ankle bone, and so on and so forth, you get to celebrate. They get into the anatomy and the physiology of the bones. But for this message today, the bones, they have to represent your desires, your call, your, your God given mandate, your dream. It, it, it has to represent something that's, that's more germane to you. It has to represent something that's more intrinsic to what you want to do, your desires. It, it ought not just be a time to celebrate it and demonstrate that we can talk about the anatomy of the bones. It's got to be something different or something, something deeper if we're going to bless the church and really give it something to hold on to. The bones represent more than just the physical nature. The bones represent where you could have been what you wanted to do, what you left behind, what you passed up, what you didn't achieve, the bones represent my goals. The bones represent my dreams. The bones represent that thing I'm still trying to achieve. 
function, but he don't know the bones. He can tell you uh, the possible ethnicity based on the bone height and the bone density, the bone's thickness and various other factors, but he don't know the bones. He can tell you who the bones used to belong to, but God knows. God knows who they are. He knows what they are. He knows where they are. He knows why they are. He knows when they are. He knows what they are, who they are. God, can't nobody do me like you. You are God by yourself and besides you, there's no other. You too high to get over. You too low to get under. You too wide to go around. And you stand complete in yourself. Can these bones live? When you're in the valley church, I'm going to get to my message. You got to speak life when you're in the valley. God told Ezekiel, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. God knew who the bones belong to. It's time for us to have an Ezekiel moment. I don't know about you, but it's time to prophesy to everything I missed out on. Because I had my valley experience. It's time to say all my dry bones. It's time for y'all to live. All my bad decisions. It's time for you to live. All the things I missed out on. It's time for you to live. Amen. God said in verse 5. Surely I will cause breath to come into you. And you shall live. No matter what I missed out on. No
Was paid. 
Jesus. Can't nobody love him like Jesus. Can't nobody save him like Jesus. Can't nobody help me like Jesus. And so I believe I might have my bad experience, but I begin to speak life while I was in the valley. I speak life while I'm in the valley. And I breathe on every manipulation sent by the enemy. Breathe! 
The valley was just for a season. The valley was not meant to be permanent. It was just temporary. It was just for a season that's coming to pass. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. For what the word, or what the Lord has declared, it shall come to pass. The Lord said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And though the vision tarry, wait. We got a reference point. He said, though the vision tarry, wait. It will surely come to pass. You might be in the valley right now, everybody stand. You might be in the valley right now. But it demonstrates to us that God has not forgotten those who are in the valley. Israel, the whole house of Israel had become just dry bones. But God knew who they were. He said these bones are the whole house of Israel. Now can the bones live? And God began to grieve on the bones. He said, son of man, prophesy to these bones. And, and that's the message inside, the message for us. Prophesy. Prophesy to yourself. The tell me, you might have had the dead, but you don't have it now. I might have gone through some trouble back then, but I'm speaking life right now. Life is death is in the power of your tongue. You shall have what you say. Is there one today who does not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Is there one today? Is there one today? Hallelujah. Is there one that requires prayer? Is there one that requires prayer? If you have a prayer request for yourself, you want to stand in the gap for somebody else, why don't you come down and pray with you right now? Is there one for prayer today? Hallelujah.